Okay, so I'm gonna try to do this vlog if I can. <laughs> it has been a very busy week. Um, I would say that we're getting ready for Shabbat, but I don't feel like we're really getting ready for Shabbat because we've had a lot going on. It's been kind of an emotional day, a little bit for me. Not like a lot, but just like, ugh. So I will probably post this way later because we are just so jam-packed and it's so busy. Um, so we are finally moving and we are moving at the very end of October, you guys. Um, it's a blessing. We found um, a home that we really love and it's just, um, just another thing of watching God's hand in our life and I just was like rocking our youngest to a nap because we usually, um, I usually will do like rocking and then just spending time with my youngest and then I'll put him in his crib and it's just such a beautiful season in our life and so um, I was just giving our youngest a time to just nap in my arms and I was just taking in the fact that his room was now fully empty and um, I was like wow God you are so good like I had tears I was like God is so good I mean it literally gave us a house that um, even though it was a three bedroom there's like this beautiful space down here that's large enough for the kids to have a playroom and a schoolroom and it just be like the miscellaneous room and then we could like just it's so huge like I didn't even use up the space actually because I knew we were going to be moving but um it was just the most perfect most beautiful home for us to be in and rent and stay in while we were looking um in Kentucky for where God wanted us to be and um it worked out so perfect but I have to tell you guys I was like you just do not like you do not know literally how much stuff you have until you go through and you move again and it's like I do not know how we go through so much stuff like oh, it is ridiculous like I just I was like I'm done I'm just gonna pack it all and I'm gonna sort all of it later just because it's just a lot of stuff to go through. It does not seem like a lot when you're looking at a room. It seems like so simple, but once you start packing it all, you realize like you really have to plan like way, way, way ahead. And you have to have like major boxes and everything because I was running out of boxes and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna start throwing things in black trash bags and I'm just gonna like go with it. <laughs> so, um, it has been a beautiful, beautiful season here. It has been such a godsend. Like this has been the most beautiful home that I've ever had. That's just so like clean and modern and just like, there's nothing wrong with the house. There's like, I was kind of starting to get bored because I was like, I don't have any like home projects, which I'm also like a really big, homey project kind of person like I like to paint I like to but this new house that we're going to is going to be so it's going to be so refreshing in a different way because I'll actually get to put things up on the wall I'll get to put pictures up I'll get to paint it you know all the rooms I'm a fresh beautiful coat of paint which I'm a big fan of like when you walk into a new home like I, I'm like, I want all the walls freshly painted, which these walls were freshly painted. Like they were nice, nice, beautiful white walls. Um, gorgeous, absolutely loved it. But I like to kind of do those things myself because I like to know like I did that and it's just, I probably add more work by doing that. But I just felt like the walls were a little bit blotchy. So there could have been like a little bit of improvement with that. However, overall the home that we have stayed in has been so refreshing to be in so gorgeous beautiful neighborhood just absolutely like everything we could have ever dreamed of or imagined like the lord just like up above and beyond like blessed our our home our life just the neighborhood we stayed in like it, it's a dream come true like it has been a dream come true this whole thing like 
And the thing is like looking back, like I could never ever have imagined that that this is like how God, like this is where he would lead our lives. And looking back, although it was so hard, thinking like, oh my gosh, I'm leaving San Diego and I'm leaving my comfort zone. And I'm like, blah, blah, blah. I cannot believe where he led me. It's like, wow, like when he closes the door, like really, sometimes it may not like, it's just like, oh my gosh, God, what are you doing? But sometimes we don't see the bigger picture until like, years later down the road and it's just like oh wow look what god was doing so we found a home that we really really like and we're super happy with it took a while at first i was like i'm never gonna find it but then we did and it was just like i just knew it was the lord like we knew it was the lord we're like this is the lord we're just it's so beautiful um so it's been <laughs> a beautiful journey um moving is a lot a lot of work i felt like Man, the first move from Rio Vista to here was a lot of work, but I did not realize like when you move into an even bigger house, it's in a lot more work. I wanted to say that when you have a really good husband who has an amazing heart for God, like he's not faking it, he's not trying to play games with God, he's not just showing up for church on a Sunday because it's like, oh, this is what, you know, I do. I just, I do this. Um, when you have like a, a, a husband who truly serves the Lord, it makes marriage so beautiful. It makes the teamwork 100% like it's like the glue, like God is 100% the glue. Because I will tell you like having a husband that you can be really good teammates with, that you can work together really, really well and pray together and like talk about God, it makes your relationship super sexy. And it makes doing the things that are a lot of work 10 times easier because you're both heavy lifting the weight. Like whenever my husband is working hard, I am working just as hard alongside him. Maybe not as hard as he is because he's so much stronger and like he can do a lot more of the heavy lifting than I can, but I am right there beside him. Like I'm not chilling on the couch, having popcorn and a soda, you know, like I'm right there. I'm like, hey, what do you need? How can I help you? I'm like right beside him. But I find so much joy in that. I find so, so much joy because it's like, look, to find that at the end of the day, like you accomplish something as a team, it feels so rewarding. And then on top of that, when a man is serving the heart of God, like loving God and like wants to know the heart of God even deeper than just attending church or like maybe reading his Bible and then closing it and then saying, oh, I got something out of that, but he didn't really like know how to digest that word. It makes it so, so much nicer because their heart becomes in tune to the things of the Lord and they become more insightful to how to be a good husband, how to be attentive to their wife, how to see the things that their wife really needs, but not from a place of complaint, like, oh my gosh, I have to do this now. Like, oh, I have to do this. Like, oh my gosh, like this is so much work. But to see the work as a blessing and a reward. So I like, I so encourage like young people who are dating to really like, have like a prayer journal and like write down like your request of not like really putting your fleshly needs first, but putting your spiritual eyes on and praying first for your husband like god i like pray that your husband is a man who loves god like loves and wants to serve the lord with all his heart with all his mind with everything in him where god is like his first priority like it's nice to feel like a priority to our husbands but the most beautiful thing that i think there could ever be in a relationship is knowing that your husband is serving the heart of God wholeheartedly.
that will have the heart of God for you. Like, so when you're down, he's like, God is praying for you. Like he is with you in that, but it's not a burden. He's with you in that, but it's like, no, I can find joy in the work. I can find joy in being beside. In the same way, like when you're prayed up, like when you have a heart for God and you're serving the Lord because you want to, not because like, oh, well, my husband is serving God, so therefore I will. Like, no, no, no. It's so like, no, no, way. Like it should be that you want to serve the heart of God whole, wholeheartedly in such a way that when it comes down to it, like if your husband stopped following God, you would be faithful to continue following God even when it got hard, even when it got difficult, even when you, even if you had to get in the trenches, even when things were like so, like so challenging, like that you would serve with a heart that serves not from a place of being burdened, but serving because it is, it is like a blessing and a joy to serve. Like it, it blesses my heart, it blesses my spirit. Like when things are down, we are praying together and we are in that like, and, and encouraging your husband like, you know what, I know this is a very difficult time. This is a very difficult season, but God is with us in this moment and God, he's gonna see us through. We don't know how he's gonna see us through right now. And you know what, sometimes things are thrown at us or sometimes the enemy comes at us and it's like, you like staying rooted in the word is so so important there are times like i will get behind my word and i will feel like the holy spirit like you should probably get back on that word or i will feel that hunger in my spirit like oh man i so hunger for the word like i know like i'm like making an effort like i've got to get back to the word i need to get back to the word even through this move i was like oh my gosh i just want to be the word what are we there? like want to sit with god I just want to like open my bible and sit here for like five minutes and just soak it up because my spirit gets so hungry for God. And I know like when I'm like, I feel like I've not had a meal in days and I need, I need to eat my spiritual food. That spiritual food, spending that time with the Holy Spirit and allowing the Holy Spirit to like minister to your spirit and like feed your spirit. That is so vital because we need that so that when the hard times come, we have been eating and feeding on the word of God. And we have been just like really putting on the spirit of endurance. So when things come, we're like, no, we have been fortifying our spirits to meet those challenges or to meet those difficult places so that we are in a, a headspace to be able to get on our knees and really go before the Lord when those challenges come and seek the Lord for answers and wisdom and direction so that we do not see those things as like, whoa, this is overwhelming. I, I can't um, handle what is now coming at me. But when we are fortified in the spirit of the Lord, because we have been reading and we have been digesting and we have been eating of the word, we can meet those things head on with a good, strong um, mind that is in Christ to know like, no, that's okay. I know this is coming. This is not it's unsettling but you know what it's not going to unsettle my spirit it's not going to rock my world it's not going to make me falter from where i'm at walking with god because i am trusting and believing that god he's holding everything together and that like that's a beautiful thing because i feel like when we have a strong relationship with god for ourselves when things come at our husbands when things come we are fortified to meet our husband right where they're at mentally and emotionally to be a mental and emotional support to them in Christ, but vice versa. And it doesn't burden us. It's like, okay, God has fortified me to stand in this moment for my children and for my family. But then secondly, it's a beautiful thing when your husband's walking in the Lord and he is fortified in God not just he opened his Bible and it's like he like great thank you what a beautiful word and he attended church and he does all the good things we can all do good things all the time we can all be good people all the time but we are also sinners and we're fallen and our flesh is fallen so unless we are truly rooted in Christ as our Lord and Savior and we are truly in that place of like having an authentic and real and truthful relationship with God it, it just becomes works instead of a relationship. And that shows greatly in our walk and how we carry ourselves and how we talk to people. 
um, how we show grace and mercy and forgiveness and being able to meet people right where they're at. Like, it's nice when you have that in your relationship because without Christ, without having a, a real authentic relationship with God, we can get selfish, we can get in on our way, we can get in on how we want our life to be, how we want things to go, we can get in on you know, wanting our way all the time when it comes to plans, when it comes to what we wanted to do, where we wanted to go, trying to force things to happen that may or may not have been in the will or plan of God because we are just so ready within our flesh to like kick down these doors that God never actually meant to have had open. The beautiful thing about having a, a Christ-centered marriage and relationship is that there's an authentic place of you're in love with God truly and really and your husband is in love with God truly and really. There's no there's no pretending, there's no playing games, there's no playing church, there's no playing Christian. There's because we could all do that because we we are we are just fleshly beings. Like we're not perfect. And one day we're all going to have to face the Lord for ourselves. So at some point if we were playing church or we were playing God, that's that is going to come out between you know, you and God, but that on earth, it plays out in our relationships and in our marriage and how we treat people and how we treat one another and how we um, plan together, work together and how um, that can create a place of being a team or playing against one another. So today I was just thinking about that and I was just thinking like how like how incredibly grateful that I am to have such an amazing husband who has this beautiful heart for God and, and how he just digs into his relationship with God because he really brings that to the table in our relationship and it shows up big. It shows up major. It shows up in the way that he, um, in his fatherhood, how he leads um, as well as just as a husband and how it helps so much in everything we do together and the the ability to lift the the weights of life as a team it's absolutely huge i feel like this also just plays out hugely in that we can count on each other um so that if there's an area where my husband has to do something i can come along and do other things and he can know that he can count on me to have his back I can also count on him to have mine. If I need help with something, I can count on 100% knowing that he is going to be right there beside me, helping me out and vice versa. He knows that if he's working on something, he can count on me to come alongside him and help him too. It also helps in parenting too, because you, you're, if you're a team, you're both a part of sharing the responsibility of the fact that you are 100% like a united front. So if I say something and this is a rule, I can 100% guarantee that my husband is going to back that with me. So it's so nice. I know that at times there can be challenges even in parenting or just sometimes like the day with children. And so if it wasn't for having such an amazing husband who comes alongside me in every area of my life, just as I do the same for him, we can 100% like team up where I can say, you know what, I'm in the middle of baking these, you know, baking these cookies or I'm, I'm making bread and I know that my husband is going to help me to make sure that, okay, make sure the kids had a book before bed and he'll do that. And it's so nice to know that whatever I need that day or whatever he needs that day because of the Lord and because of having a relationship with Jesus, we're able to come alongside one another and we can sow into each other's lives first so that then we are able to sow into our children's life the love of God and the grace of God so that our children can see what it looks like to have a mom and a dad who together can stand in agreement in, in not only their relationship with God, which from there, life flows through all of that. 
So my greatest encouragement is pray for your spouse. My last little word of encouragement here is pray. Pray together, but also pray in your own prayer closet. That is so richly rewarding. Prayer is this really beautiful and amazing blessing. It's one of those things that prayer is <laughs> one of those things that is basically simply put, it's a conversation with God. And when you can have that together and also have your own personal conversation with God and not something that you're both doing, it makes a world of difference because when you are in agreement and you are both praying as one, you can both go in the direction together that God is calling you. But if you're praying one way and your husband is praying another and you're not in agreement and he's going left and you're going right and you're both praying two different prayers, you're not in agreement. You're trying to go in one way and your husband's trying to go a different way. And if your husband has a vision that you're not on board with, you're basically going to be like going in circles because you're tied to one another spiritually before God. And so if your husband has a vision that God has actually put deep down on the inside of him to live out in his life, but you don't, you don't want to be on board with that. You don't want to go in that direction. You're going to be praying to go in a whole other direction. And you're both going to be like pulling on this rope in two different directions. But when you are actually in agreement together, like you are both talking and planning and seeking the Lord as one, it makes a world of difference. You can actually walk together in that same direction and see how God needs you both to take you where God wants to lead you as a as one because you become one. I think that it can be so easy to, um, I think what I had to learn when I got married was that we are not one person. Um, we are not one we are not two separate people living together. Like when you get married, you literally do become one in the Lord, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, intimately on so many, that's on so many levels. Like that is how God ordained it to be. That is his sovereignty over marriage. And that makes it so beautiful. And that's what really, um, that is what gets Satan so mad. Like that's what like upsets him. Like he does not want to see unity in marriage. And so if the enemy can get in and divide a marriage by creating this division of like, you go this way, but your husband's trying to go that way. But if he's not really authentically walking with God, but he attends church, that's not being married. But if you're not one together, like if you're not in agreement, that creates so much division and that's just how that's how the enemy likes to create division in marriage is when you're not walking as one god never meant for marriage to be two separate people living out their own life separately god meant for marriage to be a beautiful union of two people becoming one but being a, a, a team the bible does talk about how um god once has called women to be the help meet to the husband to come alongside to to be prayer warriors to be supportive and so um it's not going off and doing your own thing and being like well okay i don't care about you i'm gonna deal with me first that's such a selfish spirit a big part of marriage is hey i'm gonna go do this do you want to do this with me or i'd love to do this and i would love it if you did this with me and it would mean a lot to me if you did these things with me and then coming alongside your spouse and being like, yeah, okay, sure, I'll do that with you. I would love to do that with you. Not shrugging each other off into your own separate worlds or pushing each other away and being like, no, you do you and I'll do me and let's just call it good. You know, marriage is like enjoying each other's company, wanting to be in each other's presence and wanting to be a part of each other's lives. I'm not saying you can't do anything separately or like that you shouldn't have your own things that you like. What I'm saying is if that edifies your spirit to want to be a part of your spouse's life, enjoy the fruit and the gift of that and vice versa. If 
You know, if your husband wants to enjoy doing certain things with you, go and enjoy those things with him that he also enjoys. Like take interest in one another's hobbies and things that you like doing and things that even if it doesn't interest you to start, like pray about it and ask God, you know, that this is not a hobby that interests me, but help me to find that place within myself where I'm going to really take an interest and actually find the joy in those things because God did create us to enjoy our spouse and to enjoy being around our spouse because we're not around our spouse forever. You know, God has only given us a certain amount of time here on earth. And so every moment, every day that we have a chance to enjoy one another's company and like do things together and enjoy one another, that is a beautiful gift and blessing from God, you know, and not to begrudge that. So that's all I'm saying. Don't begrudge your partner and your, your husband, you know, being and doing things with them that they enjoy being with you and you enjoy being with them. Enjoy being in their presence, just like you would enjoy being in the holy presence of God. Um, I've learned so much from this season. There is so much joy in being a team and in praying for your husband because you never know what God does when you are a team and you are enjoying the fulfillment of being one. So I highly encourage that um, I'm going to jump off of this vlog now, but I hope that some of what I've shared is a word of encouragement and hopefully some food for thought. Um, I will probably share more in the coming days, but uh, right now I have this beautiful time and a blessing to kind of sit here and share as um, I have this, I've had this time, this downtime before I have to now throw things in the van and yes, I probably will not be posting this for a very long time because things are going to get busy again, but this is what it is. So until the time I have a chance to vlog and share more, um, I would love to hear from you. If you do need any prayer, you want a word of encouragement on marriage or you have questions, um, I am open to those conversations and so feel free to reach out if you're able to. I don't, I haven't set anything up. I don't think on my YouTube channel, so I'll figure that out at some point, maybe down the road. But for now, if anything, I hope this was food for thought and a word of encouragement. Uh, if you are not married yet and you are praying about it or thinking about it or you're asking God about your spouse because I'm telling you when you are prayed up before you get married and you have set this before the heart of God, I'm not to say that marriage is going to be this perfect bed of roses, but I am saying that when you do have a man who has a heart for God and it, and he is truly authentic about it in a very non-selfish way and it's not about how you know he looks to the public or to other people and he is 100% sold out for God. I will tell you that it will make a world of difference in your marriage because you're getting married to become one in God and to also enjoy your spouse and to enjoy their presence and to worship the Lord together and to grow in God together and to grow together in the Lord. So those are the most important things um, that help build a marriage and I just want to share that because I have been... Um, I can say that I've truly enjoyed the fruit of that. So I hope that that is something to that will just encourage your spirit or give you food for thought. And I will vlog soon.